This free step-by-step -step video comes to you directly from Haynes. You can complete more than 200 jobs on this vehicle when you purchase the complete Haynes online manual at haynes.com. Rear brake shoe replacement. The bonnet release lever is located on the bottom of the lower dash panel. Open the bonnet by releasing the locking lever from the bottom of the dashboard above the throttle pedal. Lift the front of the bonnet up and release the safety lever before lifting the bonnet up and locking in position with the prop bar. If the wheels are being removed, loosen each wheel nut a half turn, working in a criss-cross pattern. Place the jack beneath the rear diff centre to raise the rear of the vehicle. Lift the vehicle up and place jack stands beneath the rear axle. Carefully lower the jack until the stands are supporting the weight of the vehicle. Leave the jack in place and rock the vehicle from side to side to ensure it is securely supported on the jack stands before removing the jack from beneath the vehicle. Remove the rear wheels. Release the handbrake and check that the vehicle is in neutral. Remove the screw from the brake drum. Using a hammer, tap the brake drum between the wheel studs to break any rust seal between the axle and brake drum. Remove the brake drum. Clean all brake components with a commercially available brake cleaning solution and place a container beneath the brakes to catch the solution. Check the inside of the brake drum for scoring. If the brake shoes have worn down to metal, replace the rear brake drums as a matching set. If the drums are lightly glazed, dress them up with some coarse emery paper and then clean with brake cleaning solution. Peel back each boot on the wheel cylinder and check for any brake fluid inside the boot. Fluid in the boot indicates that the wheel cylinder is leaking and they should be replaced as a pair while the brake shoes are removed. Wrap a cable tie around the wheel cylinder pistons to prevent them from popping out while working on the brakes. Tighten the cable tie securely and cut the end off the cable tie. Disconnect the upper return spring from the rear shoe. Then disconnect the lower anchor spring from the rear shoe. Disconnect the locking pole spring and then remove the adjuster lever. Push in the rear shoe retaining spring, reach behind the brake backing plate and rotate the pin 90 degrees and separate the spring from the pin. Remove the rear shoe and then remove the adjusting strut from between the two shoes. Push in the front shoe retaining spring, reach behind the brake backing plate and rotate the pin 90 degrees before separating the spring from the pin. Partially remove the front brake shoe and release the parking brake cable from the parking brake lever. Use a screwdriver to release the parking brake lever clip and remove the lever from the front brake shoe. Install the parking brake lever to the new brake shoe and use long nosed pliers to install the retaining clip. Using long nosed pliers, slide the spring along the parking brake cable until there is sufficient exposed cable to connect to the parking brake lever. Fold the parking brake lever up behind the brake shoe, engaging the top of the shoe with the wheel cylinder. Pass the front shoe retainer pin through the hole in the shoe, then install the retainer spring. Compress the retainer spring, passing the pin through the hole. Rotate the pin and lock the spring in place. Screw the adjusting strut thread into the adjusting strut approximately two turns, to compensate for the thickness of the new brake shoes. Install the adjusting strut with the long end facing out and the adjuster wheel toward the rear shoe. Install the rear shoe, guiding the adjusting strut groove between the shoe and seating the lower end in the lower anchor and the upper end of the shoe into the wheel cylinder. Install the rear shoe retainer pin through the hole in the shoe, then install and lock the retainer spring in place. Install the locking pole to the rear shoe 
making sure the top part of the lever sits between the outside of the shoe and the inside of the adjusting strut. Hook the spring through the rear shoe and then connect it to the hole in the bottom of the adjusting lever. Connect the lower anchor spring to the front brake shoe and stretch it over and connect it to the hole in the rear shoe. Connect the upper return spring to the front shoe and using locking pliers or spring pliers, extend it to the rear shoe and lock it in place. Apply force to the rear shoe to prevent the wheel cylinder pistons being expelled from the wheel cylinders while trying to stretch the upper return spring to the rear shoe. Cut and remove the cable tie from the wheel cylinder. Make sure that all of the cable tie is removed and that the wheel cylinder boots remain on the wheel cylinders properly. Check that all the components are securely connected and that the brake shoes appear to be sitting centrally. Repeat the procedure on the opposite side of the vehicle. Install the brake drum and rotate the drum. Remove the rubber grommet from the rear of the backing plate. Use a screwdriver to rotate the adjuster while rotating the brake drum. As the shoe starts to bind on the drum, use a small hammer to give the brake drum a light tap where the top and bottom of each shoe would be. This helps to centralise the shoe and you may find that the binding goes away once this is done. Continue to rotate the adjuster until the brake drum locks. Using a second screwdriver or a hooked tool, release the locking pull and rotate the adjuster in the opposite direction until the brake drum rotates without binding. Install the rubber grommet. Repeat the procedure on the opposite wheel. Install the wheels. Place the jack back under the vehicle in the same position and raise it until it clears the jack stands. Remove the stands from each side of the vehicle. Slowly lower the jack until the weight of the vehicle is back on the wheels and remove the jack from beneath the vehicle. If the wheels were removed, tighten the wheel nuts using a torque wrench to tighten the wheel nuts to 135 newton meters for Ford models or 103 newton meters for Mazda models. Sit in the vehicle and check the operation of the foot brake. If the brakes were out of adjustment, you will feel the pedal gets hard higher up in the travel than it did prior to adjusting the brakes. Also, check the operation of the handbrake. It will require less travel when applying the handbrake. Check the brake fluid level and top it up using DOT4 brake fluid if necessary.